Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to set up a remote access VPN using PFSense and OpenVPN. So we're going to go ahead first and go to System Cert Manager. And we want to make what's called a Certificate Authority. And this is basically going to help us make sure certificates we give to our users are legitimate and can be used for authentication to our VPN. So we're going to just put test VPN in here. And we want to keep the rest of the defaults here. We can change the common name though to test VPN. And you would fill all this out if it was uh, you know outside of a lab environment. Now that we've made our CA, we want to go to certificates. And we want to add a new certificate. Okay, we'll also uh, name this test VPN. We want this to be an int uh, internal certificate. And the common name again, we'll just say test VPN. And instead of a user, we want this to be a server certificate because we're going to use this certificate for OpenVPN. <coughs> So this will be a part of the TLS connection when clients connect. So now that we have both of those things, we're going to go ahead and go into user manager just while we're on, you know, this portion. And we'll just create the user uh, right now. So my user is going to be T-Tech. Again, just use what whatever you want here. Now, you may not want to make them a member of the admin group because you don't want them to have very many privileges in this case. We're going to click to create a user certificate. We're going to call it T-Tech. You want this to be the CA we just made. This is what makes this user's certificate legitimate for authentication to the VPN. And we're going to say save. All right. Now that those two things are done, we want to go to VPN, um, open VPN, the VPN tab and go to open VPN. All right. So now that we're under open VPN servers, we're just going to click add and do make sure you're under the servers tab, not the uh, clients tab there. So you want to make sure instead of peer-to-peer -peer SSL TLS that we have remote access SSL TLS plus user authentication. Now the reason is if you use remote access or for that matter peer-to-peer -peer with just SSL TLS or just user authentication there's less of a barrier to the compromise of the VPN because here they would just need a certificate with the SSL TLS or here they would just steal the username and password. But if we have both, there's extra layers to get through. So we want to have both there and you want to have local database checked. Again, you can use RADIUS or LDAP, that's fine too. Now I'm going to leave this on UDP on, on IPv4 only. If you have IPv6, feel free to have that as well, or both of them if you want. But if you use TCP, though, you're going to introduce some um, overhead, because if you're using something like HTTPS through the VPN, and it is a TCP connection also, um, if you lose packets on the HTTPS connection, that means that the VPN in turn has lost packets. So if that uses TCP also at layer 4, they have to retransmit, and that slows everything down. So that's why UDP is recommended um, for most use cases at least. We're going to stick with layer 3 tunnel mode. If you want to use things that utilize uh, layer 2 heavily, um, like some routing protocols, um, you know, things of that nature, you can change it to that. And then you can actually have layer 2 connectivity through there. Um, like certain redundancy protocols and things of that nature. But most cases, layer 3 tunnel mode is just fine for us. 
we want to use the win interface and if you have more than one win you can uh, choose that from here you want to leave the port the same and let's just say test VPN here as well now um, we want our peer certificate authority to say test VPN but under server certificates we want to choose our test VPN certificate not the user certificate you want this to be test VPN the user certificates you want to be able to revoke them if users leave corporations or if they get compromised and you know even for a home user if your phone gets stolen you want to be able to revoke that certificate that was on the phone so <clears throat> with that though do make sure that is set correctly um, we're good on that you don't ever usually have to change encryption settings unless you know there's a reason you you want to and again if you had hardware acceleration we could choose that here we don't <clears throat> now tunnel settings this has to do with the overlay network and this is the part that makes a VPN virtual because the only place that this IP network is going to exist is between the VPN endpoints the underlay network on the other hand is the network you're using connect to to connect to the VPN um, regardless if it's a coffee shop a hotel um, your home network um, that's what's called the underlay network the overlay is what the tunnel network is so we're going to choose 10 255 255 0 24 again that's the network ID and that's the CIDR notation and the important part is whatever network you're connecting to the VPN from you don't want that to match any of the IP subnets in your routing table if it does the packets won't be able to be routed across the VPN correctly because they're gonna have a physical interface to go out of on that network not the virtual VPN interface that OpenVPN creates now we're not using IPv6 but it's the same concept yeah, this is that tunnel network that um, overlay just in that case you would be using IPv6 on your underlay network as well now we do want to redirect all clients to the gateway same thing if you have IPv6 and um, <clears throat> I'm gonna set the concurrent connections to 5 now I don't have much RAM in this VM so I'm setting it lower same thing if you may not have like if you do not have like a AES and I or anything like that you may want to set it lower because you may hit some hardware limits but the good news is with PFSense though you can there is no artificial limits whatsoever I really do like that about PFSense now inter-client communication as well if you want to connect with another client and communicate with them like share a file over FTP or something or SFTP um, this box allows that to happen over the VPN connection it's a very great way to utilize a VPN if you want to and you may want this if you want the same certificate on uh, multiple devices you should have a separate certificate but it's fine to have it um, checked if you don't have a choice I always check this the oh, if your IP changes so if your lease on your uh, WAN for your cable modem or something uh, gives you a new IP address while you're connected to the VPN it will not drop your connection and same thing with topology very rarely do you have to change this ping settings you can leave how they are we're gonna give a domain name of just test VPN we'll push out some v some uh, DNS servers to them now this could be uh, another DNS server you have in your network this could be a Raspberry I'm sorry this could be like a pie hole this could be the unbound DNS server on PFSense because then you could use your PF blocker to filter what your VPN users can actually access um, but with that though we should be able to hit save here alright once that saves successfully this is what you should see we have our tunnel network our mode slash crypto and the port and protocol we chose as well as the interface 
So that is what a successful creation of the server looks like. If you have an error, just uh, re um, make sure the users are made, make sure the certificates are made as well. All right, now we have to set some firewall rules and then we have to export some certificates. So I will see you in a second. All right, so now that we have our VPN created, we're going to go to Firewall Rules, and we need to create two rules. So the first one on our WAN interface actually allows access to UDP port 1194. So this will allow clients to connect to OpenVPN. And without that, um, the packets are going to be dropped. So uh, you just want to make the rule under this, though, uh, because it is first match. Now, we want this to be pass. We want IPv4 here, the WAN interface. And you want this to be UDP. Under source, you can restrict specific networks if you want to. If you have a network you know, um, the, the, that should only be the only network connecting into the VPN. The destination we want set as WAN address, but if you have um, dual WAN, you can get away with setting this firewall because that will resolve all interface IP addresses on the firewall. Or, of course, make two separate rules with maybe WAN 1 and WAN 2 address as the match. But from there, that destination port value is 1194, and here it is 1194 as well. So then we're just going to say test VPN access rule and let's save this okay let's apply this and it should apply that for us alright so now remember that is to connect to OpenVPN but once we're connected we actually want to tell uh, tell it what traffic is allowed to go through the VPN the OpenVPN tab. Now we're going to add a rule under OpenVPN and what we want to put in this rule is just that um, basically what is allowed to go over the VPN. So we want to pass certain traffic on the OpenVPN interface and if you have IPv6 you want to put that in here. We're going to pass any protocol, but you can pass as little as you want. You could only pass TCP port 80 if you wanted. You can, again, only have certain sources and only maybe have the LAN net as a destination or uh, corporate network as a destination. Okay, So that would make it not a, not a proxy, but make it so you can't go through anywhere else um, You know, to connect to any other networks. So again, test VPN access. Okay, because this is just saying what um, they can access through our VPN here. Now we're going to apply the changes. Okay, the last thing we want to do is go to um, set system package manager. And you want to go to available packages. Oh, we're going to search for a VPN. And we want to install OpenVPN Client Export here. So we're going to install. Confirm. And go ahead and let that install. All right, now that that's installed, we're going to go to OpenVPN under VPN again. And we're going to go to Client Export. Now I will say, normally you could put these um, the client certificates on a staging server if you wanted like a web server that only serves these files because you might not want your clients you know administratively logging into the firewall you know I suppose you could also make the user so they only have access to this page but that doesn't scale very well so there are other methods to do this but for our scenario you know this is fine so you want remote access server in there to be what we created you want to leave everything the, the 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 defaults rather and that user we made earlier should be here with ttech as a certificate name and what we want to do is say inline configuration and we're going to download for most clients 
and this downloads the configuration file for OpenVPN. Next, we're going to go out and download OpenVPN Connect and use that file and connect back to the VPN we've created. Now, and also to make testing easier, we're going to hit the Add on the dashboard and add OpenVPN, so the OpenVPN widget, and that will allow us to quickly see who's connected to the VPN server. All right, so that's out there, and now we're going to download OpenVPN Connect. Okay, now we're going to go ahead, let's search OpenVPN. Go to OpenVPN.net here. Okay, now we want to go to VPN Client, OpenVPN Connect. And let's download the OpenVPN Connect for Windows. And let's go ahead and save that file. And I will see you in a second, and then we're going to import the file. All right, so now to install it, we just double clicked and we're going to go through the wizard um, to install this here. It's very similar on Linux as well. All right, we're almost finished installing here. <coughs> and once that's finished, we're going to open that up and then import the uh, configuration file for our VPN server. All right, now we're going to hit finish. And now we're going to import it in. All right, so in order to um, have the configuration loaded into OpenVPN, we have two options. We can type a URL and get you know, an automatic configuration, or we can take a file, which is what we exported from our client exporter package. Now, we're going to do this, and what I've done is I've downloaded the file as we did earlier. It's the same file and it's for the specific user ttech and this file has in it the public uh, key of that certificate. The, the portion that should match in addition to the user and password authentication part. So you need all of this, not just the username and password. We explained why earlier. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this and this will import those settings for us. Now you can see the IP address is locked. This could also be a domain name, but this is a private address. So if you are testing this as I am, you know, you're following along, make sure under interfaces WAN, you uncheck the box that says block private networks, because in the case of PFSense, they want to block those for security because they shouldn't be on the WAN coming in. So um, you want to uncheck that to make sure this is working correctly. And now we're going to type that username. And we're going to hit connect. And now we want to type a password. So remember, we have three things. We have the certificate specifically uh, only for the user, T-Tech. So if someone takes it, they still don't know the username and password. But in addition to the certificate, we have the user and we have the password that have to match. And if we uh, take our firewall rule we created for you to access OpenVPN, you can also say the source IP has to be a certain IP. So you kind of have four layers of authentication then to connect the, to the VPN. But let's hit OK here, and we should be able to connect if everything is working. Successful VPN connection looks like. You see it's been up for a minute, and you can see the Keep Alive packets for the VPN um, about every once every 10 seconds, but there is a maximum time, um, and if it's reached, the connection actually is dropped. And this is, our, this is our private IP. This is the virtual IP address. It doesn't exist anywhere except in the VPN tunnel for that connection. And then our server address is part of the overlay network. The, I'm sorry, the, the underlay network, remember? This, is, this would be a public IP if this wasn't a lab, but it works the same way. And it doesn't matter if you connect based on domain name or anything like that. But this is how we set up a VPN, and then that private IP is, terminates at the OpenVPN server running on PFSense, and then what happens if we send out to the internet from the PFSense so over the WAN interface, we have a proxy because what happens is it NATs the traffic to be the WAN IP address of PFSense. So you also have a proxy in addition to encryption. And 
also being able to access resources like logging into the firewall without having to expose the port to the whole internet. They have to get through all that authentication to be able to do that remotely. But there's many advantages to this, and um, that, you know that's just a few of them I listed. But now we're going to go on the interface and see what it looks like, you know, on the dashboard. All right, so this is what um, the dashboard will look like when we have a successful VPN connection. You can see the name and time of the user T Tech that logged in. This is our real IP, so this wouldn't necessarily be the same IP in the WAN subnet. It, it wouldn't fall in the WAN subnet usually. It would be another public IP somewhere else. So uh, that would be the difference there. And there's a source port number we're connecting from. And then the time we connected, as well as the virtual IP address we've been assigned from OpenVPN. So with all of those things together, this is the VPN connection. So that is how we set up OpenVPN as a remote access VPN. So with all of that, I do hope this was helpful for you. And um, I'd like to really thank you for viewing. I do appreciate it. And as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech. Thank you for viewing, and have a very nice day.